Yeah, we're doing a tier list. You saw the thumbnail. Yeah, so it's kind of clickbait. It's easy content, but World Champs is over. Kind of a chance to relax and do some fun stuff. So let's do a tier list of some of the best and worst team kits for 2023. Um, obviously, not all of the countries are in here. I kind of selected by who's ranked highly in the in the two different, or this, pardon me, the three different disciplines. Um, plus, I threw Canada in because it's my, my choice, my video. Do what I want. Um, I guess we should talk about like criteria for this, right? Um, I was kind of thinking about like, okay, yeah, how do I judge these? Because obviously I've got my personal preferences, but I also kind of want to be able to articulate why I think things. And I've been using this word distinctive, like are the jerseys distinctive? And that's usually kind of a bit of like an eye test. It kind of is up to you if you think something is really distinctive or if you think it's unique based on, on what you've been exposed to. So I think the, the best ways for me to kind of build a framework for this is first of all, the design. So is there shape and is there form and are you are you actually creating some kind of design in the jersey? But also is there color? And that sounds like such like a low bar, but some of these jerseys are ass, man. Some of these jerseys are white tank tops or like black tank tops. So it is a low bar, but it's kind of where we have to set it. So I don't like doing these tier lists by taking one at a time and putting them into a slot because I feel like this is mostly relative. So we're gonna break these out first of all just throw a bunch to the top, a bunch to the bottom, and some in the middle, just based on do they have color at all? And is there like any element of design to these jerseys? So we're gonna start there and then we're gonna break it down. And of course, this is my opinion. You can add your own opinion by going to the link in the description. You can do this yourself. And I think if you save it, then we build kind of like an aggregate result of what we all think about these IFSC jerseys. So uh, try it out. Let me know what you think yourself. Uh, let's do it. Um, where do we start? We're going to break it out by who has color and who doesn't, who has shape and who doesn't. Starting from the top, Australia, we got some color, we got a little bit of shape. You know, anytime there's two colors in a jersey, there's probably going to be a little bit of design about like how they interact. So yeah, we're going to say shape and color here in the Australian jersey. Austria, same thing. We got a couple different types of green. Belgium, of course, some color and some design. Canada, just white and black. I can't count those as colors. But there's some shape, so we'll start in the middle because it's got one of two. One out of two ain't bad, especially in this field. China, we got black on the back, red on the front, little white stripe, we'll start them at the top. Czech Republic, they got color for sure. We're gonna talk about that, but no shape at all. You're in the middle. Spain, there's like some gentle, it's kind of hard to see, a little bit of striping going on, so we'll start them at the top. France, at the bottom, garbage jersey, spoilers. <sighs> the British jersey and, and actually the Slovenian jersey are gonna cause some headaches. Take, take some time for yourself to think, make up your own mind. Do you think Adidas stripes count as like design? I'm gonna be generous to start and we'll say, we'll say it is. They got some blue, they got some stripes. Germany, they certainly don't have design, but they got a bit of color with the shorts and that's kind of unique by itself. Indonesia, we got both. Is again, black tank tops, man. What are we doing? Italy, we got some color and we got some design under the arms. I dig it, we'll start up there. Same thing with Japan, we got some shape and classic two-tone. Kazakhstan, <laughs> I'm not sure if we consider piping design, but we'll start them at the top because they got color. Korea, start them at the top too. Uh, Indonesia, or not Indonesia, sorry, Poland. We got color, we don't quite have design, I don't think. Is there something under the arm hidden in there that I'm missing? I don't think there is. So we're gonna start them in the middle. Slovenia, oh, if I put Great Britain up here. Uh, for now, for now. Serbia, they got color at least, nothing else. Switzerland again, just color, no shape. US, god damn it, you. All right, this is where we're gonna start. Buckle up. All right, USA. For a country that has so much symbolism and so much like history and sport, I find American teams often have just like really trash jerseys and this is no exception. Um, USA has been super inconsistent with their jerseys like through all of the climbing that I can remember. I remember gray jerseys. I remember different types of blue. 
Um, of course, <laughs> the, like Nathaniel Coleman debut era, where it was like bright blue and like highlighter green, like clearly something where it seems like they just take what they can get in terms of jerseys and, and probably don't have any kind of like active design initiative to create their apparel. Um, for a country with so much symbolism, you got stars, you got stripes, you can put an eagle on the thing, you put a, an apple pie or like a... Uh, <laughs> like a reaper I don't know. yeah you got so many options why is it just a white tank top that's a letdown Israel anyway yeah needless to say USA is staying at the bottom so are all three of these Israel black tank top they've been wearing it for a couple of years that's cool they used to do some blue whatever but like I don't associate just like a straight up black jersey with you know, Israeli climbing or Israeli sports or Israel in general. It's just a black tank top. There's no effort to this. Same thing with France. And man, France is the killer. France, aren't they, isn't like the French team, not just in climbing, but like in general, aren't they called like the Bleu? They're like the Blues. That's blue is their color. Is it not? They've, France has worn blue in climbing for as far as I can remember. I'm pretty sure Mejdi and Orien both won their first medals wearing blue. Go back to anybody. I'm going to miss a ton of names, but go back uh, Melissa Leneve, go back Menu Cornu, Alban Levier, Gauthier Soper, Guillaume Glaromonde. All these guys, they're all in blue, man. Mal Sando is winning the world championship. Pretty sure he was wearing blue back then too. Um, yeah, why'd you let go of like the, the signature color for your country and instead switch to just black with no design at all? Like what was the upside to this? It doesn't make you stand out. It's just a black. It's That's the same jersey that I was making for our team kids like 10 years ago. It's like an American apparel tank top in black. Probably the most disappointing apparel change of the year was Team France, for sure. It just looks like active wear. Especially like the women's side. Just It just looks like generic active wear. It's France all the way to the bottom. Huge loss. All right. Let's go to the countries that had a little bit of color, if not design. Switzerland, all red. Nothing complicated about this. All red with big block letters, SUI under the arms. It's not special. It's not creative, but they've been doing it for a while. It's kind of their thing. Um, I think in the past they had kind of done um, uh, uh, like white under the arm or like black under the arm, which is is like cool, I guess. But the, the, the one thing that, and this is actually, we should talk about this with Switzerland right now is I think Jersey should have color. I think Jersey should have some shape probably. You don't need both of those. You just want to be distinctive. And the one other factor that we should add makes a good Jersey is if it's got some history, right? If it has some, not necessarily meaning, but if you've used a Jersey for long enough, it becomes a symbol in itself, right? And so Switzerland is going to be my example for a country that has been wearing red Solid red for long enough where it has become synonymous with at least a generation, if not a couple generations of their climbers. It's only red, but it is clearly the Swiss jersey, right? So it's not excellent. It's not bad. I think B tier is pretty much where it should be. I'm pretty comfortable with this. I think that's about right. So B is like good. B is a good jersey. It's not great. It's not bad. It's just good. I'm okay with that. Serbia. People in the Discord know I don't like teal or like off green that like verges into blue. It's really not my vibe. There's nothing going on about this shirt. And I'm not going to consider the context of like how rich or how not rich the team is when it comes to their apparel. I'm just thinking about, you know, what could be in an ideal world. And this ain't it. As much as I like the bold like two color text on the back, two or three color text on the back, this jersey is like, as much as it is a little bit symbolic, because it's what Stasha has been wearing for a couple of years, this ain't it for me. This isn't a good jersey. It's got nothing to it. For me, this just feels like C category, not quite D category, because at least it's got like some color. Again, low bar. Uh, but yeah, that's where the Serbian one goes for me. Poland. Poland used to do a lot more like white and red stuff, if I remember right. But imagine them wearing red and white in a speed final, poles wearing red and white, and then racing against Indonesians with basically the same flag and the same jersey. That would become pretty confusing. So I got to give it up at least 
for that it's easier to distinguish them from like the other top speed countries of the day. So that's cool. I don't like this country. I don't think there's much special about this design, but I do like how the color sets off that red and white, like I guess it's an eagle in the center. This could easily be C tier for me, but I'm gonna leave it in B at the, mo at the moment because it's pretty much brand, I feel like they've only been using this for like one or two seasons, maybe a little bit longer than that. Anyway, it's not quite Swiss level, but it can stay in B. Germany, I, when I look back, I was surprised how long they've been wearing the black and the red. I thought they'd only been doing this for like two years, but they started wearing this before COVID. But I think if you remember the times when Jan and Eula were winning World Cups and Sebastian was like, you know, in lead finals with the hair and all three of them were wearing black and green, man. Like to me, still, even they've been wearing this red and black for five years and I still think the German team colors are black and Edelrid highlighter lime green. Ah. The other thing I'll say is I don't like the way that they've used their like country logo. I think it's also an eagle on the front. I don't think black sets it off very well. I feel like they should have a different color for the shirt if you're going to have basically a black logo on the front of it. And again, I'm just so used to the German team being that, that, that bright green. I can't let go of it. I, I've only been wearing it for five years, but this doesn't do it for me. This is down here. It's better than Serbia but like only, only barely. And maybe this is, you know, maybe you've already become accustomed to this German Jersey, but I still haven't. So maybe this will go up a tier as I get more used to it. And maybe if we start to see more like winners in this Jersey and it becomes ingrained in my head as like a, as you know, like a podium placing outfit, but right now it's not, it, it just doesn't connect with me. Down in C tier, Slovenia. Okay, you know what? We got to talk about Slovenia and Great Britain at the same time. Actually, no, we're gonna have to do them separately. Slovenia, Slovenia, Slovenia has been wearing like the, the uh, Adidas stripes for quite a long time. I feel like they've done a bunch of different colors because I seem to remember Yanya winning in like, well, they also had like a, a lime green face. I think it was like white jerseys with lime green highlights or black jerseys with lime green highlights, but it was always the Adidas stripes. I think she won in like red as well. So they've gone all over the place. The one thing that stayed consistent is the stripes. I don't like white jerseys. I think it's too simple when there's nothing else going on to it. But part of me is so used to seeing that jersey topping boulders. that I'm kind of like, well, it's got to be a good jersey. If some great climbers wear it. But it's nothing special, man. And this is the, like, as much as I'm getting used to, seeing this so much like it's not a well-designed jersey it's just what you have it's just there's no character to it and honestly on the back the adidas logo is bigger than like the slovenian like logo the, that, that little insect crest from their flag which features mountains on it features their, their entire like country's flag is centered around like images of a, a mountain so it's a great symbol for a climbing country but adidas just like takes bigger priority. I don't know. This is like, this one is honestly almost close to D tier for me and that there's just nothing to it. Now, some people like Eddie might say like, this is kind of his ideal team Jersey where the priority isn't about the country. It's about the sponsor and figure out a way to get eyeballs on the sponsor to create more value from those athletes and hopefully get value back to those athletes. But this just isn't a special Jersey. I want to put it, I'll leave it in C for now because let's talk about Great Britain. This is what the French jersey should have been. Look at this Great Britain's jersey. This is, this is the French jersey, man. Blue, blue with white stripes. It's cool that the stripes are inverted. So they got like white kind of as the outline for the stripes technically. That's kind of cool. And it's nice that it's not black or white. It's just blue. It's pretty basic blue. It's nothing special. I don't know. Great, like Great Britain has gone through some weird, like, you might remember, was it pink that Shauna Coxie used to be climbing in, like in the early days where she was consistently in finals but not winning stuff? I feel like she had like a pink tank top. The BMC's kind of been all over the place, but I really liked when they were in the lead up to the Olympics. I don't think it was the Olympic jersey itself, but in the lead up to the Olympics, they started going with more of like a white base, which isn't that creative, but 
using the red and the blue that is like so synonymous with the Union Jack, right? If you, you know, if you remember like girl power and all that like Spice Girl stuff from the 90s that we went through, I grew up understanding what the Union Jack was because of that like cultural impact of, of you know, the Spice Girls, Oasis, all these big like Brit rock and Brit pop. And, and the Union Jack is like one of the most recognizable symbols in the world. And I kind of wish that was maybe more integrated in the design. And I thought they got really close, Shauna Coxie wearing those, those colors and those shapes before the Olympics. And then I think their Olympic jersey was really good too. So I, nah, that's, it's not a good jersey for me. It's like fine. It's better. I just like the color a bit better than the Serbian one. But it's not a particularly good jersey. It's just a shirt, man. There's nothing else to it. Adam Andra. <laughs> Czech Republic. This country's gone through a lot of different jerseys. They clearly have not like found their stride about what they want their team to look like. There's no design in this, but I got to give props to so like, this is the zaniest color of any of these. I don't even know what color that is. Is that one of those? Like, is that indigo? Is that violet? Like, what is that color? Now I play like my, my computer monitor is completely blown out just from like playing Counter-Strike and amping up the digital vibrance nonstop. So maybe, maybe it's that that's messing with me, but I know there's some other people in the Plastic Weekly community that, that kind of have strong feelings about this color. I don't know how I feel about it, but just by the color, that is a distinctive jersey. Uh, it's not a good one, but it's distinctive. Props on the color, but I, I is it better than the... Nah, it's right there. That color is doing some heavy lifting, for real. Um, nice try, Adam. Good, good work. All right, Canada. This is kind of the opposite, that there is no color on this, but it does have some design. I'm actually really into this kind of like trapezoid shape that they put on the front and the back, especially on the men's one where the trapezoid like comes really far up the back. I think it's really cool. Um, it's probably the most like prominent form, like prominent shape on a jersey of the entire circuit right now, which makes it unique. The colors aren't special, but like, you know, as, as you might be aware, if you're from a country where your two colors are white and red, it's pretty hard to make your jersey not look like you're just Santa Claus or you're just Christmas themed all the time, right? Um, I think this is one of the best jerseys that Canada has ever had. This is probably the best Canadian jersey. We've had some garbage. We've had like generic red stuff, kind of similar to the Swiss uniforms. We've had a lot of white jerseys with like red highlights or red designs trying to add maple leaves. We went through some, I think there was a, was it a brown or orange men's jersey one year? Like we've seen some shit, man. This is solid. And it's not just because it's Arcteryx and all the kids like think it's cool. <laughs> I also think that's actually like a good jersey. It's not great, but considering you're only using white and black, I think that's actually really good. And I'm biased as shit, but you, you do your own list, whatever. I think it stays in the B tier for sure. And honestly, if you know what, actually, here's what I'll say. If Canada keeps this jersey for a couple more years, I think this becomes an A-tier jersey. And a few years after that, if this has just become our consistent symbol, this is so distinctive. Nobody else is doing that kind of shape. I think that could be like an S-tier jersey eventually, especially if you start to see that thing on podiums. There's something fire about that shape. I love that. Good job to whoever's involved in that stuff. All right, we gotta, we gotta start with all the guys at the top. And they are not staying at the top, that's for sure. Here are the people that have some color and a little bit of shape. Korea. I think this is a good jersey. So it's dark on the back. We got a lot of white at the front and then a big, a big slash of red and some dark blue below it. Korea has been messing with this kind of thing for a few years. I think previously that red stripe was higher up. So there's a lot less white. It was a much darker jersey. And the red was like moved up to kind of like the, the, the breast height. And then it was just white kind of up on the shoulders. I really like this one. I think it's really clean. It's got some bright colors on the front. I love it when the jerseys contrast with the back. I don't know what it is about that. I love it when the front and the back are like markedly different, like the Chinese jersey we're going to talk about. I think this is like a, a killer jersey. S tier though, I'll be, I'll be straight up. I'm stingy with S tier. So I think this is a great jersey. 
It's way better than these ones, but it is not S tier just yet. You got to work to get S tier. Um, yeah, I think this makes sense so far. Kazakhstan. <sighs> this isn't like outstanding, but Kazakhstan has a unique flag. Those colors that like, I don't, I guess it's a kind of teal again, like not my vibe. I don't like this flag, but that flag stands out and I like how they've integrated it into their jersey. So you have a more serious color on the front, that deep blue that sets off the flag on the chest, I think is really smart. And then having that piping as the highlight, again, nobody else is doing that. I think that's really hot. I dig this jersey. I don't think it's a great jersey. I think it's good. I think it's kind of in this area. Is it better than Poland? I would probably say, yeah. Is it better than Switzerland? Not yet. I don't know. If you see people like Rishat wearing this a few more years, that'd be cool. I like. I think before they had like a white jersey with the highlighter, or with that like highlight teal on it. And when that bright color is set off by white, it like doesn't work as well. So I like this where they switch to a darker color to, uh, to kind of amp up the brightness of their flag. Good jersey, not great, but good. Japan, guys, this, if there are contenders for S tier jerseys, this is one of them, all right? This thing is simple, but man, of all of these jerseys, this is getting close to being the most timeless of all the jerseys on here. I'm trying to think like Austria is kind of a contender in here. Australia actually, actually is like pretty close, but like, this thing goes back. Do I leave it in S tier or do I put it down in A and then do we come back to it later? But honestly, among all, I'm, I'm gonna leave this up here for now and we're gonna talk about it more. But those colors have been in use for a long ass time. And even though it's simple, I think it looks amazing as a hot ass jersey. We're going to come back to it, and whether or not it stays in S tier, we will see. But it's it's definitely S or A. Italy. This is like another, as much as I put it at the top to start, because it's got some color and it's got some shape. Like, I think in the underarm, it's got a bit of a pattern. This is another one where just like a country just went backwards from what they had before, man. So Italy, like, famously used the red and the green of their flag to a very blocky but bold and easy to recognize effect on their jerseys in the past. I don't even know how long that goes back, but I feel like their jerseys were always white with some like light blue, and then you'd have like a block of green on one side, a block of red on the other, and it was a distinctive jersey, which is like criteria number one to be a great jersey is just distinctive. Nobody else doing anything like what you're doing and easy to identify what country it is just at a glance, right? And with the old Italian jersey, it was that easy, partially because they were the only ones using that color combo, but because those colors are so Italian, the green and the red together really doesn't come up that much, right? In, in like Western flags and Western cultures is pretty rare. Um, I thought Italy used to have a great jersey and they used it for so long. I thought that one was killer. This is a step backward. Again, not to be like a huge hater of like teal-ish colors, but this does not work for me. And then aside from that, it's mostly just like the letting go, the fact that they gave up on what was a really excellent jersey, a well-worn, a well-known top, and they've dropped it. They are doing like coordinated bottoms. I think they're short. They've got the Fassi logo on it as well. So it's like, you know, kind of like the German thing not just the fact that they're, they've are they got a consistent uniform for top and bottom, but also it has some identity. Like some teams just mandate you got to wear black bottoms or something like simple like that. But this, the bottom is included in the jersey. That's kind of nice. But this like, this isn't S tier for sure. This isn't A tier. This is like, is this even B tier? I feel like this jersey could be fine and maybe I'll get used to it. But think of what you gave up. This looks like this is base, like this is interchangeable with this new Polish jersey. And pretty close to the Austrian one up here that Nikolai's, is that, no, that's that's the Luka. I don't know, this is C tier. You guys, you, they gave up such a great jersey for this. 
That's such a shame. Where does it fit on the list? I don't know. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, I'm going to put it under. I'm going to put it. Uh, I'm just going to put it at the bottom because I'm so sad that we lost that like famous Italian jersey, man. That's such a shame. Back to the top. Indonesia. Mm, there's a lot of white on this Indonesian jersey, yo. They got some like speckles, so it's got some shape when you're like looking at it up close or when it's well lit. You can tell that there's like some effort put into it. Is it particularly symbolic? Not really. This is approximately what the Indonesian team has been wearing for quite a few years. You have to go back probably like six-ish years maybe to get to them doing like solid red jerseys if I remember right. So it's been around, it's been consistent. Is it even a great jersey though? I feel like this is just good. It's like, yeah, good job. It's a jersey, it's got some design, it's got the right colors. Does it mean anything to me? Not really. It's starting to be distinctive, getting there, but it's kind of basic. It's just like good, it's fine. Too much white for me. Yeah, not, not really my vibe, too simple. Again, the curse of like white and red as your national colors, you kind of got to break out from those for it, to, for, for it to work, man. Spain, definitely not S tier. So let's knock it down a peg right away. It's got, the, the one cool thing about this jersey is sometimes you can't quite tell how much yellow is in this. There's actually not that much. It's mostly just like a reddy orangey kind of color but you get little little moments where you get a, a, like kind of like a stripey pattern. There is a stripe that goes across the chest in yellow or gold, I'm not talking about that. But there is kind of like a little bit of patterning on the top and the bottom of the jersey that just adds a bit of dimension and stuff. So it's like cool, it's not great. It's been around, but it's kind of simple. It doesn't have a ton of character to me. I think this is a good jersey, it's fine. It's above the Polish, it's probably above the Kazakh one. Yeah, about that, I'm cool with this. Nah, actually, the Kazakh one goes up. Nah, I'll just leave it. China. This one's really simple, and I think this one might kind of confuse some people about why I think this, but I love that the back of this jersey is all black and the front of it is all red. I love the contrast of having those two different colors based on which way the athlete is facing, just like we talked about with the Korean jersey. I think that's such a cool design choice. I love that. And this is such a Chinese jersey, man. It's a red with yellow highlights, and then that black and that little bit of stripe of white. I don't think it's extraordinary, but I think it's better than good. And I, I might be like really leaning on the black back of it that kind of sets it off for me. But it's becoming really synonymous with Asian climbing. You're seeing this jersey a lot more. They're the ones owning that 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 huge block of red when you go to those Asian events. I think it's distinct. I think especially in the World Cups where there's not many other countries doing that full red thing. I think it really stands out. It's easy to see who they are. Their harnesses are dope too. I didn't really include that in this, but those like custom team China harnesses are, are sick. I kind of want one of those. Um, yeah, this is like A tier. This is a great jersey, in my opinion. Belgium. All right, guys, we're getting serious. This for me is like a contender for the best best jersey of the year right up there with the Japanese one. So I think we're gonna save this one for later. We're gonna put it up there. We're gonna put, who is that, Hannes? We're gonna put Hannes up with Kokoro up here. I think that's Kokoro. We're gonna leave these two guys here. We're gonna come back to them. Let's talk about these other two. Jan Luca Posh wearing the Austrian jersey, man. This is a great jersey. It's simple. I hate this color. There's nothing I can do about it. This is such an Austrian color. If any country owns this kind of off green, it is Austria in climbing. Again, a red and white country that made the right decision to like get away from red and white as their colors. Sadly, they went to red and white for the Olympics. That's really too bad. But this jersey is just reminding me of all the other Austrian like champions that have worn that same color, right? Jakob Schubert has won so many medals wearing that color. Anna Storr has won so many medals wearing that color. Killian Fischhuber has won a bunch of medals wearing that color. You think you photos of Heiko, Wilco, uh, of Heiko Wilhelm taking photos wearing that color. That to me is the Austrian color. That is the Austrian jersey. It gets modified here and there. That's all cool. But just that color by itself is one of the few colors that when I see it in climbing, 
I think of one particular country. And for this type of tealy green, I think of Austria, right? And it goes back like a generation. Again, all those names I just mentioned, Killian Fischhuber wearing that color, that goes back. This is a great jersey. I don't think it's S tier. There's nothing like special about it, in my opinion. And maybe it's just because I don't like the color because I think if the arguments I'm going to make about the Japanese jersey, you could honestly make them about the Austrian jersey as well. But that said, Austria has kind of gone back and forth. Every once in a while, they like kind of swerve a little bit. They had that purple kind of era. There's plenty of photos of, of like Anna Storr wearing purple winning comps as well, right? So it's not, you know, it's not up here because they keep, they keep messing around. They keep, they don't know what's good for them. They should really stick with this color rather than, uh, <laughs> rather than like flirting with other colors here and there. That is an Austrian jersey if I ever saw one. That's A tier. Good, uh, uh, simple design, but the color means something and it means Austria. And then Australia, it's not S tier, but like we were talking about with Austria, even though it's not climbing specific, green and yellow, man, that's Australia. It's probably, I think it's like Brazil as well, possibly. Maybe they add blue, uh, what's, the, what's the Brazilian soccer thing? Like green and yellow on top, blue shorts. Anyway, this to me is an Australian jersey. They've been wearing the same thing forever. Like not just Osh wearing that outfit the entire time we've seen her on the circuit, but like I'm remembering James Cassay getting in finals wearing that. That must be like over 10 years ago now, right? It must be. It could be like 10 years ago. Yeah, that's an Australian jersey. It's simple as hell. And honestly, like part of me thinks it could end up in B tier for just being like, yeah, it's a good jersey. The colors represent your country. But I think because they've been so consistent, part of me is upping it a little bit because it's stayed consistent and it's got such a strong national identity. It does its job so well. You can take all the letters off it. You can take all the symbols off it. And I know who that is. I know when I see that kangaroo yellow and barbecue green, I know that's the Australian climbing team. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave that. Okay, we got our last two, Belgium and Japan. Should I sort these out before we get to like the top tier shit? Yeah, let's let's just clean this all up. Korea, Korea's solid, it's better than the Chinese one. The Australian one, again, is not that special. It's almost a B tier jersey. This feels right. Austria could be up here depending on the day, but I think that Korea, Korean one looks fly. <clears throat> yes. Canada is the top here. Switzerland, sure. Spain, sure. Kazakhstan, sure. I feel like I could move this up depending on my mood or if Rishat's just won something recently, but it can stay wherever. I don't care. Polish and then the Indonesian one. Yeah, honestly, this one could move down. That's fine. C tier. Yeah, Germany. Adam's bonky. <laughs> This has to, this can't be better than anything, but it's still better than, it's still better than the Italian, fuck the Italian one, man. So, nah, this Slovenian one's, sorry. I think I'm being swayed too much by the fact that I've seen the Slovenian jersey at the top of so many podiums. This isn't a good jersey. Sorry. Yeah, Slovenia went down to the D tier. That's really too bad for like such an incredible team. Put some effort into it. I wanna see something more distinct. Yeah. And then <laughs> USA at the bottom or France at the bottom? France is really the ultimate letdown, honestly, but nothing's worse than a white shirt, man. The only thing keeping Yanya up here is the fact that it's Yanya in that jersey. I think white stays at the bottom. Sorry, USA. Yeah, as much as France let me down so much this year, USA at the bottom. Okay, so we got the A tier, the B tier, the C tier, and the D tier sorted, I think. It's down to the S tier. We got to talk about Belgium and Japan. And these, these are great jerseys or better for pretty different reasons. <clears throat> Let's start with the Belgian one. Belgium hasn't had like a ton of noteworthy climbers for the last 20 years, basically. You're like, who can we talk about? We can talk about like Chloe, I don't actually know how to pronounce her name. I've never heard it out loud, but Chloe Graftio, 
who I think won one or maybe a couple Boulder World Cups around like 2010, 2011. She tragically died, I believe, in 2012, very young. So that was kind of the last time I think you had a, a, a serious Belgian winner aside from Annick Verhoeven and the lead side. Sorry, I was like getting very discipline specific. So yeah, Chloe Graftio in around 2010, Annick Verhoeven won a couple kind of like in the early Yanya days as well. So maybe like 2016-ish. And then if you go further back, of course, Muriel Sarkany, but that is like late 90s, 2000s. Belgium hasn't had consistent jerseys and no particular symbolism that I can remember for the last like six, seven, eight years. Their jerseys have bounced between, I think I remember gray. I'm pretty sure I remember blue, maybe a green, maybe like a purpley pink. And they've seemed low effort, right? It's, it's kind of like the shirts we see at the bottom here. It's like the Serbian one, like the Italian one, like the Israeli one. It's just a single color tank top with your Federation logo stuck on top of it. And that's nothing special. But this jersey this year is something special. Like if it's not the best jersey on the circuit, it is certainly the best debut for 2023. First of all, popping with a serious color, just the color by itself is unique and distinct. And then you had those sleeves. Those sleeves are so, so sick. And it's so simple, it's just stripes. It's just stripes around the arm. Or if you're looking at the female one, I think they do the stripes around the, uh, like around the, uh, the kind of the center of the chest, <laughs> which I'll be honest, I don't like as much. I do like the men's one with the sleeves a lot more. Horizontal stripes, I don't love that. Um, but these ones on the, on the sleeves look so sick. It's, I, I feel like I'm just gonna repeat myself, just how distinct this is, but how like, how clean it is as well. It's like psychedelic on the, on the outsides and then serious but bold on the outside. And then the special little, like little extra flair at the end of having your full name spelled on the back, Belgium, but tilted up 90 degrees. So it's running down vertically from your neck. I think that is such a sick, of all the jerseys here, that's the one I would pay the most for, I think. And it's extra rare because it's only been out for a year. That is a bonkers jersey. That feels like it had, like this is an S tier jersey. It's not lower than S tier. That's probably the most professional and sickest looking jersey on the circuit this year. But we got to talk about Japan. Basically the question is, does this jersey have company from the Japanese jersey? The Japanese jersey, on the other hand, is simple. It's just a couple different colors. It's two tones of blue with, you know, they used to put the Japanese flag over the heart. Now they've got this stylized Team Japan logo, which I think is actually pretty smart. Whether it's the flag or the symbol, it looks great when it's set off against like a deep blue. And while the Belgian one is a hot fire, daring jersey that's brand new and is kind of doesn't have much history to it, it's the opposite for the Japanese one. There's nothing particularly special or outgoing about it, but it has so much history. The Japanese team using that two-tone blue for years back, right? This is like Akio won almost every single one of her World Cups wearing those two blues. The come up of Kokoro and Yoshiyuki and Tomoa and all of the other Japanese climbers that have won, you know, Boulder World Cup here or there, Momoka Oda. Um, even Sakuru Hori, like going back to, he must have been wearing this too when he was, or I'm trying to think when his wins were, like 2009, 10 or 11 or something like that. <coughs> now they didn't always use exactly these two blues. I think they were lightened up a little bit at one point. And then of course, if you go back far enough, the vivid memory is Akio wearing this one where it was like a lighter blue, again, a, you know, it was always a darker blue on top, lighter blue below. But they had like a stylized, I don't know if it was a dragon or something, but it had kind of this, this outline pattern of, I don't know if it was maybe like a long flower or if it was like a dragon coming up on the side. But actually some like legit design, like artwork on the jersey. And not that I loved it a lot, but again, like distinct. And they've kept that same color pattern all this time. And again, kind of like the Yanya effect, I'm just so used to seeing this jersey at the top of boulders. 
it's become synonymous with this sport. It's like, you know, if what's the country that you associate with being amazing at bouldering and being like trailblazing and bouldering? It's Team Japan and it's this jersey every single time. It's only seen minor changes, minor revisions over the last 10-ish years, but it looks so good. It's so simple. Is it A tier or is it S tier? If we're just talking about the jersey itself and not thinking about like the context or my feelings about it, it's like an A tier at best. It probably sits like somewhere in here. But this jersey has earned its spot in S tier, I think, because of how long they bothered to keep it around. They haven't veered from this aside from like kind of the Olympics, right? When everybody did a different design. They've like stayed true to these colors. It looks clean, it's simple. It sets off the white and the red of the national symbols. And it's seen so much traffic. This has been won, this has been worn by so many athletes and so many of those athletes have won when they were wearing it. This is an S tier jersey. I'm gonna put it below the Belgian one because I really need to emphasize how sick a job. Whoever made this Belgian shirt, you absolutely knocked it out of the park. And I think every other one of these countries should be coming to you asking for some design help. Even the ones with the great jerseys, you could probably only make it better. That's such a home run, that Belgian jersey. So I think this is my tier list for the 2023 jerseys. Belgium on top, Japan narrow second, and the rest just fall below it. Um, as you can see, this isn't every country in here. If you want your country added, um, I think I can still add countries to this even though it's already posted and even though you can already use it. If this video gets like a certain number of likes or views or whatever, I can add more countries or just send me a message. Um, and if you, especially if you send me a photo that shows off the jersey really well, I can probably make one of these thumbnails pretty quick. And maybe a few weeks from now, I'll add a bunch of them for, uh, for future use. But that's gonna be my tier list. I hope you enjoyed it. Please try it yourself. I'd love to know like what other people think about these and how you feel about symbolism and just color and stuff. I think it's just a fun thing to do after a long season. Um, yeah, let's leave it at that. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you've subscribed if you've watched this far. Like it. And of course, there'll be more videos coming out soon. So thanks for hanging out. We'll see you in the next one.